You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 90. Is Prime Scan ready for prime time with Teron Agarwal? T-Bone joins The Dental Guys to discuss his recent investment in Dent Supply Serona's Prime Scan and also Align Technologies Itero. Did T-Bone really say that he installed scanners in every operatory? We find this out and so much more this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Do you want to be able to understand, place, restore, and implement dental implants into your practice? Well, we've got the course for you, Restorative Driven Implants, taught by the Dental Guys. Restorative Driven Implants is coming to Des Moines, Iowa this fall 2019. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com right now to sign up for the next series. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And uh, this is an exciting, exciting show for us because, you know, we, we are, we go back a long way with our, our guests on the show. Right, and we're gonna we're gonna definitely talk more about that when we get into the interview. But uh, we have True Agarwal T Bone on the show this week to talk about a kind of a perfect follow up to our last episode, which was our 2019 Dental Guys Buyer Guide to Intraoral Scanning and Milling. And interestingly, when we released that episode, Wes, we immediately started getting some feedback, and most yeah. of it very very positive. But we had some interesting feedback from users of the Medit i500. In fact, um, Medit Corporate reached out to us. Right. Which, if so you're listening users, to this Medit Corporate, we're waiting on your email. Right. We said, yeah, they reached out to us. We've been talking with them, or we have we have replied. We haven't really heard anything, but mm-hmm. um, we got kind of two different replies on Medit. We got the replies from people who. A couple people who have it, but not really that many that actually have it. It's more people that are, you know, benchtop racers, I call them, Wes. Benchtop racers, I'm familiar with that term. It's people that, you know, they talk about how fast their car would be if it had the modifications. They don't actually have it, but they read about it. They read about it. So they're like, well, let me just tell you, if I had that car and I did this to it, it would be this fast and it'd be faster than yours and better. Now you're like, oh, so you have one of those cars? They're like, no, I actually have it. But I've heard this, and I have a friend who has it, and like it's he says it's awesome. So we're benchtop racing a little bit with the Medit, and and I and I'm kind of like not sure. But then we did have, to be fair, we had some feedback from some people that are actually using it in their office, and. Yeah. Um, so and let's honestly, talk about we that. Did let's dive into that. what do we think about the medic? Because we talked about it a bit in the episode, Wes, but we didn't give it a lot of time. And the reason is because it's not, it's not like it, in terms of it's it's apples to oranges, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, we talked about that. I have brought this thing into my office and tested it out. You know, yeah. hooked it up to a laptop. It was easy to install. It wasn't wasn't a big deal. But I mean, you got to think. I've been scanning for a long time. I kind of right. I'm a techno savvy kind of guy. So yeah. I mean, it wasn't like super nerd. You know, yeah, but it wasn't was it wasn't hard to set up. I don't I don't think it's it's that. It it the again the very first thing that all th- my team said was it's huge, it's right. huge, it's a big right. It's but, a big, but I want to be clear on this, people. That what it's not like we're just ignoring this. Wes has tried it, okay. Right. Like we're we're fine with it. It's great, but. What is what our issues were, and we replied so, to some Facebook posts. I hate the stupid socials, but like, okay, so here's the, some of the issues. All right, one, one is who are we buying it from? Right. Okay, who are these people? What kind of support are they going to give us? Definitely not local support. Okay, it's a comp. Most of these are bought by a company from far, far away, unless you happen to live in California, mm-hmm. and they ship it to you and they train you online. Yeah. How to use it. Now, I'm not saying that's bad. 
if you know how to already scan, like Wes just hooked it up to a laptop, it was fine. It's fine. So, so if you know what you're doing, that's great. But if you are new to scanning, I'm sorry, but that's not a great way to introduce an office to scanning. I think we called training. scanning a disruption to your practice. And we know so many people that have tried scanning. Right. And they get they get so frustrated. And we don't want that for you, you know? Right. And I'm not saying med it's gonna frustrate you. I'm saying any scanner. Right. It doesn't mean no, we're not singling out any of them. We're no. like you have to have you on have site to- training, in my opinion. When you first start with intraoral scanning, you need on-site training by somebody mm-hmm. who knows what they're doing. And it's even with that, it's going to still be a little frustrating. So second thing, Wes, and this is maybe people will say that this is just the dental guys being nerds, but mm-hmm. there's no data. No one has tested this scanner. Well, you know, and their argument's going to be, John, I was just looking on Medit's corporate site, is, you know, yep. they reference accuracy and trueness for single crowns. Single crowns. You know, they reference... Yeah. You know, but I looked it uh, up, dude. There's only one study that's ever looked at it, and it was in some yeah. random compendium, and yeah. it didn't even. It's not even a study. It's just like they looked at this one thing. So and you know, it's, it's not a head-to-head comparison. We want to be like a literature-based, you know, show. You know, right. we want to teach that way. And I'm not saying that it's not great. You know, no, and we're not. We're not. We're not. What we're saying though is, is that what? Let me just back up for just a second. And if you walked in to Best Buy, okay? And you were looking at all the TVs and you saw the Samsungs, the Sonys, the Panasonics, you saw uh, Sony, you saw all these brands of TVs and you're sitting there comparing them. And then, you know, somebody said, you know what? You need to really look at, you know, this, you know, particular brand. Who knows what Mm -hmm. it is, okay? Mm -hmm. And... And you're like, well, I never did see it. You know, I never did see it there. Okay? Right. So I never saw it at like the number one place to go buy TVs. Right. Would that make you a little hesitant? Exactly. Well, I, I mean, mean we, if Best Buy doesn't even carry the brand, it doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't it mean just it's means, bad. But it, it just, just means you me have think. to take a little pause and say, okay, who are these people? And is it a major player? Now, we also know we have companies that defy that. We have small companies like, say, XDR that we oh, yeah. we believe in. We've te- and but the thing is, dude, at least XDR has data. They have mm-hmm. published in major journals comparing their sensor to others. And the only study I pulled up the study just real quick. The only study on the Medit, the only one. If you go to PubMed and type in i five hundred Medit, whatever, it's in the International Journal of Computer Dentistry. Okay, yeah. now I don't know about that, but you know, whatever. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. And it did okay. It right. wasn't the best. But it was okay. It, it was okay. And this is one study in some random journal somewhere. We don't see it in JPD. We don't see it in the majors. So all yeah. I guess we want to say is if it's not in the store, if it's not at the big meetings, we just have to realize that there's not going to be as much support. It's mm-hmm. a company that may or may not be around in the dental intraoral scanning world. But I will say, Wes, counterpoint, counterpoint, their lab scanners yeah, they're top are, notch. Le- are legit. Yeah, Brad, so Brad the, the dental lab guy legit. vouched for them. In fact, Brad the dental lab guy is who sent me the medit. Yeah. He was like, Wes, I want you to take a look at this. Tell me what right. you think. You know what Brad the dental lab guy said? I hate to even put word in his mouth, but I'm going to say it. He said, you know, I'm a little concerned about support. He was like, yeah. because the company that was wanting him to distribute to them, actually medit was wanting him to distribute the medit. Um, from what I understand, he said, I'm just a little concerned about support. He was like, what do you think? I said, yeah, I think it's a good scanner. Yeah. You know, I think it's a good scanner. I think it's one of those that it's like entry level. It's going to do the bread and butter well, but you're going to have to figure it out. You know what Brad the Dental Lab guy said? He said, no, I want a seamless integration. Right. You know, And, and he and- wants somebody you can call who can come to your office with help. So it's not him having to do it as the lab, uh, right. for instance. And and so, I think and you and you said you said it does bread and butter well. It, I want to just, again, counterpoint, it might do everything well, Wes. We just right. don't know. We just don't know. It might be better than Trios. It might be the best thing ever. We just okay? don't know. But we just don't know. So we're relying on what? We're relying on opinions of people who have used it. And there are some opinions of people we trust. I won't even name names. I don't want to call them out. People we do trust that a couple people have it in their office, and they've had good experiences with it so far. Yeah. I want to so I I kind of like think about this. Is like you, when you look at the cost of all these other scanners, you yeah. know, this, this scanner's not quite half, but almost half the cost. 
Yeah, it's 20,000 right. bucks. Yeah. So, you know, when you look at that and you think, man, what a value, it is a value. It delivers right. value. And in fact, their thing, I was just looking, it's funny. At our intra oil scanner delivers value, efficiency, and productivity. What? Yeah. Now, okay. and here, so to me, Wes, who, here's bottom line. Here's what the who the meta is for. I would say the meta is for the type of person who's been scanning for a while, is comfortable with scanning, doesn't need a bunch of training, doesn't yeah. need somebody to hold their hand, understands technology, and is looking to put together a value based but very effective. Uh, scanning and milling solution potentially for their office. Yeah, I think um, it would be a great place to start. It kind of reminds yeah. me, I was looking at some of the distributors out there, and there's multiple distributors. We won't name names, but you know, I was kind of looking at some of those, and it kind of reminds me of what Benco is trying to do with CareStream. Right. Is they're trying to put together right. that nice little package, but right. you're going to have to wade the waters. You're going to have to probably sign up for some classes, you know, yeah. wherever that might be. And, and you got to integrate little. different products together. Yeah, like you're going to have to figure that out. You're going to have to wade that all. And, yeah. and the thing that's interesting to me, <clears throat> if you go to, say, one of the major distributors, probably the major distributor of Medit, and you look at their, their value proposition, what it actually says is, it says specifically, includes first-year subscription to their software powered by ExoCAD. So what does that tell you right there, Wes? They are advocating this scanner to be ExoCAD ready. Now, mm -hmm. if you know anything about intraoral scanning and milling, you know that what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you into ExoCAD. That means they're trying to get you into milling. Mm -hmm. And so this scanner is designed for somebody who wants to mill. And this company that's selling it also just so happens to have an implant company that they're heavily involved with that is big into printing guides and intraoral scanning works really well with that. So they, yeah, I, think, I think, like think this they is were a solution saying, if like that's 20, what you're looking for. Yeah, twenty k, twenty thousand dollars. That includes your first year of service uh, with ExoCAD, and then after that, you know, you're paying between depending on what modules you include, it's between two and five hundred twenty-five dollars right. for an ExoCAD yearly subscription. Uh, yeah, on a and I do want to be fair too on the training. Okay, I mentioned that there's not in-office training. They do in-person training, but you just you just have to travel. You have to go there to either LA or Baltimore mm -hmm. for one of these companies. They do some training, two-day hands-on, okay? But you have to travel there, unlike having somebody local who comes to your office and does the training. So it's not that they don't do any training, it's just that they they have you have to go to them. So again, I think there's pros and cons to this, Wes. I think it, it, those of you who out there who got well, to kind you know, of sum upset, it all we up, didn't John, talk about it, come on. This is kind okay. of an addendum, right? Right. This is kind of an addendum. Um, you know, um, the editors, looked at it and you know we mentioned it in passing in our last podcast but we're going to addendum that right. tonight ps ps i love you john <laughs> <laughs> exactly so you, you, with that in mind with that in mind what you've really come here for okay oh let's put this discussion t-bone speaks baby what you've really come here for is t-bone speaks so right after a message from our sponsor we're going to dive right into the interview you will not be disappointed by this interview i'll Hang just on. leave it at that we'll see you back in a minute this is justin goodbrand here is today's tip as you may be aware many dental practices sell for 70 to 100% of the rolling 12 month collections or three to four times EBITDA. So why are some practices selling higher than others? One simple answer, systems, CRMs, POSs, marketing, management, recare, and so on. By focusing on your operational systems, you can increase the value of your practice. For more information about today's topic and other dental related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. So here we are back and we are pretty excited about this. Uh, the show today because we're joined by someone who's kind of become a long-term, long-time contributor to our podcast in different places, <laughs> different times. It's Tarun Agarwal, otherwise affectionately known as T-Bone. You've seen him really all over the place these days. You know, he's he's everywhere. He's been uh, <laughs> old school dental towns, probably where you first got to know him. And then you began to love him. And then you started seeing him on a podcast, T-Bone Speaks. And then you started seeing him on the cover of Dental Magazine, several of them. And it was funny, we were at the Hinman meeting and we were over at the Dent Supply booth and there he was on the cover of the magazine, smiling down upon us 
from above the <laughs> it's milling like a glowing unit. light. It's like he was blessing the the milling unit yeah. as it was milling. It was a beautiful thing. So yeah. so T Bone, thank you for being with us today. Well, John, thank you for having me. I, I appreciate the uh, uh, the PR wrote uh, written uh, introduction there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't even reading, man. I was just off the cuff. That's ad lib. That's how. That's how you. You are everywhere, man. What is going uh, on? Is this what it well, means to be an influencer? Well, I, look, I don't, I don't understand the word influencer to a certain degree. <laughs> I think uh, today, today, being an influencer means just posting pictures of yourself on the internet all the time. <laughs> so uh, true. And, that is awesome. Uh, but you know. There's there's pseudo influencers now, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, things have definitely changed in that way. You're right. You don't you uh, you can certainly but, conjure that up. But people could probably say the same thing about the early 2000s with Dental Town. It was no different there. Uh, some of us came on, myself included, and uh, we became quote unquote influencers without proving it or doing it the old school way. So I'm probably just one of those old fuddy duddies now, uh, complaining. <laughs> Complaining about the new these newfangled people that at post post Facebook pictures or whatever. Oh, listen, I, I I wish them all the best of luck. Yep, that's a fair assessment. That's a fair assessment. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, we're not even go down into the high weeds anymore on that. Following that discussion, um, so what we really wanted to, to talk to you about today, we've been we've been really uh, diving in, especially last uh, episode. Uh, that we released into uh, looking at the current kind of state of the intraoral scanning and also the in-office milling market. And we know that yeah. uh, you've done a lot over the years with CEREC and uh, with especially the new uh, system. We're interested in just kind of getting your take on this because, you know, one of the things we were doing is we're checking out all the different systems out there. We're looking at Prime Scan, and, you know, we're thinking about uh, the Sarah, we're, t- we're thinking about two two groups of people: the people that have Omnicam that okay. are looking at Prime Scan and are asking the question, "Why should I go to Prime Scan or should I go to Prime Scan?" And then the other group of people, which is the people that aren't currently doing any scanning or milling, um, looking at Prime Scan. So I-, I wonder if you talk a little bit about that. Your experience uh, as a former Omnicam user, now Prime Scan user, should people be upgrading? Uh, should they be looking at this? If so, why? What do you like about it? What What are some limitations? Just kind of give us your thoughts on that process, especially for somebody who's who's uh, you know maybe not at the prime scan level yet. Yeah, you know, well, I don't know what the prime scan level means necessarily, right? But uh, let, let's let's correct one thing. I'm still a current Omnicam user as well, uh, okay. so we we still use our Omnicam today in our practice, uh, and we also use our prime scan, obviously. Um, but listen, I, I want to take a step backwards for a second, and I think um, I think what's important to understand is we're at a point now, more than ever, where digital dentistry is definitely the future of dentistry. It, it, I would call it the present, but it's a matter of uh, when, not if, people are going to have it. <clears throat> and there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace about choosing a scanner and or, or a digital impression machine. Uh, and what, what I would want to address first is there are a lot of choices, and quite frankly, the market is full of lots of good choices today, um, something that didn't exist four or five years ago. Uh, four or five years ago, it was two or three choices, um, uh, and, and at, even then, there were two or three good choices. But now we're, we're at a point where um, you know there's a minimum of 10 good choices out there. And what I would encourage anybody doing when they're looking at any type of scanner, whether it's an upgrade or a new scanner, is I would look at what does what does this thing actually do for me? If it's just replacing polyvinyl impression material, I would argue that you're not really seeing the importance or the value of what this technology can bring to your practice. Um, and, and in that case, if you're literally just looking to change polyvinyl systems, then you'll literally have 10 choices. Um, If you're looking to truly grow your practice and buy into a platform that can provide solutions for your practice, then honestly, you're probably limited to a couple of three choices at this point. Uh, You lost my video, but do you have my audio still? Yeah, I have your audio. Okay, good. Uh, So, you know, if you're looking to buy into a platform that can provide practice growth for you, 
then, um, yeah, then there's a few choices. Uh, <laughs> somehow I can't detect a camera on my Mac, but that's all right, we'll keep going. So I think it's important to understand that part of it, okay? Now, to directly answer your question, uh, what's in it for an Omnicam user? Uh, listen, uh, the Omnicam was a massive breakthrough from the previous generation. And I will argue that the Prime Scan, mm -hmm. on the surface, for many people, they may not see it as a, a, a par level breakthrough. But I think after you pick it up and actually put it in a patient's mouth, uh, you'll quickly understand how awesome it is. Uh, we've moved to a point now where full arch impressions are a couple of minutes. Uh, I truly see us putting a camera in every operatory in our practice. I see us potentially getting rid of our cameras uh, in the next six to 12 months, our digital cameras, uh, and actually just taking 3D uh, images of all our patients. Mm. And because the color is there for us to be able to show the amalgams, to show the breakdown, to show the recession, to show all of those things. And I'll argue from my hygienist experience is that it's almost quicker to take a full arch upper and lower impression than it is to take a series of six to eight photographs today. Uh, so, so we, you know, I look at these things from a very broad perspective. Now, in terms of the user that's looking to buy new, I, I would say, why not? Why, why would you not want to buy into the largest platform, the most robust platform, uh, the most well-supported and largest training community platform? To me, it's all logical. Uh, the, the question that the one has to decide is, is it worth the small premium that you pay for having a well-supported uh, and well-mature uh, product. Um, you know, so that's how I look at it. So I wanna dive into something you said a moment ago about um, how you're using this technology because, you know, as you said, if it's just a polyvinyl replacement, then you, know, you look at things differently. You start to look at just ROI on impression material and that type of thing. But when you start to talk about documentation, you start to talk about you know, showing patients changes, um, the, the workflow for that starts to become, it starts to become necessary for you to really iron out a system in your office where you can share this technology among multiple providers uh, and not have it tied up. Uh, so that's do you correct. feel like that's kind of what you're trying to do now is you're trying to say, we're going to allow all the providers in the office a certain amount of time if we know that they have a patient coming in to, to do a scan on their patient and quickly move that to the next person, or are you, multi you, you advocating buying you know, multiple <laughs> machines? Kind of talk about that. Well, I, you know, uh, how, how do I answer these questions without people <laughs> saying silly things about me? Um, <laughs> look, I, I, I think if you're in it to win it. People say you, silly things about us, T-Bone. Yeah, uh, well, trust me. That, those because are well-deserved. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Touche. So, Touche. <laughs> so listen, I, I look at it very, very cleanly, okay, is if you're in it to win it, if you truly look at your dental practice as a dental business, if you're truly trying to create something that's sustainable, that can uh, compete and thrive against DSOs and corporate practices, and if you've really moved your practice uh, from a level one to a level two and to a level three, and I can talk about how I define different levels of practices, then the real answer is you'll buy an you'll buy a, a acquisition unit for each room. Okay, mm. and, and yes, it's an investment, uh, but I will promise you, uh, if if you have the mindset that we that I advocate, uh, it, it'll make all the sense in the world. Uh, but uh, one one. Significant improvement uh, from the Omnicam to the Prime Scan, uh, and it's not in the camera, it's in the body, is that it has roughly a five hour battery life now. So you can literally move it from room to room and not having to plug it in. So it is more portable. And when you're able to scan much faster, you literally can take it from one place to another every 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so one thing. Let's kind of you, you kind of touched on the hardware there for a minute, and yeah. we'll get back to implementation yeah. um, here just in a minute because I think the implementation piece is probably the most important here. But let's kind of just talk about the hardware for just a second. What is truly different between the Omnicam mm -hmm. and 
Prime scan? Uh, the camera. Uh, well, I, I technically, uh, let, let's, let me back up. Technically, it's completely different, okay? In its current form, uh, the Prime scan has a different camera. Uh, it has a different body. It has different hardware inside the body. And it, has, and it runs uh, a different software. Okay, it runs Cerec 5.0. Uh, the Omnicam in its current form has the Omnicam camera. It has, a, you know, <clears throat> in a, a classic body. <laughs> it has, uh, in my opinion, slightly outdated uh, computer equipment. And it runs Cerec 4.6 software. And the 4.6 to 5.0 is a significant difference. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's significantly different. Now, so there is talk so that the Omnicam will move to 5.0, so it'll get the benefits of the new software. Uh, so, you know, some of those, uh, some of those features that are software-based will come to Omnicam users. Uh, but, uh, listen, the big difference is the camera. At the end of the day, uh, that's really what, that's what you're buying into, is a brand new camera platform uh, that, that, I don't know what they've done. It just works unbelievably well. Hmm. So, one thing that we noticed that it got um, the actual size yes. and... It, it's a little larger, the, uh, the lens itself, right. and it's significantly, it seems a little bit heavy. I would, uh, we I, actually, I, I would, I would argue that the little, it's not a little bigger, it's bigger, <laughs> and it's not a little heavier, it's heavier. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, we were kinda, trying to tiptoe around that, but I'm glad you just yeah. went ahead and broke the ice, man. Well, I mean, you know, in the day of like shrinking technology, our phone's getting thinner, and yeah. all that, and I know that they've changed some things and put the AI in there with uh, rejection technology and all that, but it just kind of seems a little bit like when you walk over there and you hand this to an assistant that's been using Omnicam for, mm -hmm. for a long time, they, they feel this thing and they're like, whoa, heavy. Yeah. Man, I can't even imagine getting that back in around. Now, I know mm -hmm. it's faster. Maybe the acquisition is better. But is this just iteration one? Is this iPhone, you know, like, you know how they go from iPhone 10 to iPhone 10 Plus? Is this the, I, is this the Prime Scan 1? And then we need to kind of wait for the Plus model yeah. for them to kind of work out the kinks. Or do you feel like oh. that, uh, that we need to jump in now? Yeah. Well, look, I can't answer questions like, should people jump in now? I think when someone jumps into technology is based on, personal clinical decisions with their goals, their financial, uh, a lot of those things. So it's, it's hard for me, even as a massive advocate and all of those things. I, look, I think, it's, I think Prime Scan is right for every practice. Not every practice is right for digital technology. You know, <clears> at, at the end of the day, I would, I would define it that way. And then, uh, listen, I wasn't, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't involved on the testing side of Prime Scan. Uh, so I can't give you the exact details of what's inside and what's not inside. It's not my nature anyway to know those things. But listen, it, it is bigger. It is heavier. I was uh, a little concerned about that at the beginning. It's a non-issue. You don't mm. have to move this around as much. You don't have to kind of tilt it around second molars to capture the distal of the second molars. You don't have to roll it as much to the buckle. You don't have to roll it as much to the lingual. Now, now wait so just think, a minute now. Yeah. When we talk about roll into the buckle, mm -hmm. there are undercuts in teeth, and yeah. you have to turn these things sideways. You, you have know, to turn to the them buckle. to a forty-five degree angle now. I used yes. to have to turn. I used to have to turn my Omnicam to a ninety degree angle, uh, and, and other cameras to that type of angle to capture some of these things. I, look, I can't answer how it works in that sense, but all I can tell you is that it doesn't require the same type of turns and twists and things. Uh, that were required in the past. So I guess hmm. what people want to know, we, we, we know the hardware's better. It's, hmm. it, it is a little, it is a larger scanner. It's of the largest on the market um, as far as the actual lens, but it does capture quite a bit having that larger lens yeah. in one, say, picture per se, and even though it's taken thousands per second. Um, one thing that I want us to come back to is implementation. Let's talk about the Omnicam user uh, inside of 12 months, somebody that purchased hmm. Omnicam, let's yeah. say 12 months, and then let's go from two to five years out with Omnicam. Okay. So uh, what would be the difference really for the somebody that bought it six months ago, 12 months ago versus two to five years ago? The Omnicam is the same. 
for the person that bought it the, in, in the time period. Uh, I guess really what what you're probably thinking or asking is is their disappointment that they bought technology and it's changed. Uh, so the the great news is uh, Serona, <laughs> Densply Serona, uh, have has a proven track record uh, that they have a clear upgrade path. Uh, and have been extremely fair to their customers in the past. Yes, it costs money, uh, but typically new technology costs more than older technology. Uh, right. And so they've been unbelievably fair. I've done this upgrade path when I went from Red Cam, uh, sorry, when I went from the original milling unit to the MCXL, when I went from Red Cam to Blue Cam, when I went from Blue Cam to Omnicam, and when I went from Omnicam to Prime Scan. And I've paid for every upgrade. I, I've un I, fortunately, I've been afforded a small discount, somewhere in the what works out to be about a ten percent, which is in the scheme of things nothing uh, for right. no, for all that we much. do. Um, so you know, I, I want people to know I pay for my products, uh, and every upgrade has been beneficial to my practice. Uh, so that person that bought it twelve months ago and is freaking out or angry, just give it some time. They'll 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 get you taken care of. They can't take care of everybody right away, uh, but uh, they will have a path uh, that is pretty fair and very fair uh, for everyone. Do you uh, think even, that they should up, upgrade to this hardware and, and just yeah. or wait for the software upgrade for Omnicam? You know, that, that's a personal decision. You know, look, I think everybody should always have the latest technology. I buy the iPhone every year, okay? That's just who I am, all right? But... What I will tell you from my personal opinion, and I'm, look, I'm being very truthful and honest, is if you're a single tooth dentist and that's all you ever want to be, the blue cam is more than adequate for you. Just, just downgrade to that, okay? So if that's all you're going to do, keep the Omnicam. You're going to be happy with it. It's going to do well. You'll make some hardware upgrades in terms of computing power, and you'll be very happy. If you want to move into what the future holds, uh, which is full art scanning um, and all that that brings into us, uh, then, then you want to upgrade. If you are a quadrant single tooth dentist, you'll be fine with the Omnicam. So what do you okay. think about, uh, what do you, while we're, I want to, because I definitely want to come back to the question about, <clears throat> you know, you mentioned, you made some comments about having multiple acquisition mm -hmm. units. And we heard, you know, a great lecture uh, at the Academy of Boston Integration meeting by a really great periodontist talking about tracking, you know, gingival recession changes yeah. using trios, for instance. We definitely agree yeah. that this is the future of documentation, the future of education. No question. So I would definitely want to come back to that. But I, I want to know what you think about uh, the competition, right? Because mm -hmm. there's, some, there's some new things that are being, that, are, that have been yeah. released right around the same time. Yeah. Uh, you know, trios four is released. We've got Plan Mecca Itera coming Element out with some 5D, interesting, right? I, Plan Mecca has a new camera. Yeah. You know, so, what are your thoughts on on what we're what you're seeing from some of the competition right now? It's a great time to be a dentist. You yeah. know, it's it really is. It's a great time and a confusing time. Okay. And and again, I'll go back to my, look. I, I will not say anything negative about any of those companies because they make good products. Okay. Bottom line, they make good products. The, the three shape is a good product. Itera is a good product. I own an Itera as well. Okay. Uh, the Plan Mecca is a good product. They're, they're all good products. Okay. What I will say is if you're interested in replacing polyvinyl, you have lots of choices. If you're interested in moving into a platform that will provide your <clears throat> practice growth opportunities and provide new services and procedures to you, you have a few choices. And yeah. that's the to me is a massive difference between each of them. What and, do you think that what do you think that the about the Plan Mecca ecosystem that they're trying to build? Yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of a feel there similar to what Densply Serona has. Do you yeah. think that that is legit, or do you think that's a little bit still in its infancy? Well, <laughs> it, it, look, it's legit. They're a big company. They're a great company. They have good products. My, many of my friends are there. Uh, what I would say is, relative to our ecosystem, it's in its infancy, okay? That does not mean it's not mature. That does not mean it's not good. But right. listen, we've been, we've been around 33, 34 years at this point. You know, Plan Mecca, 
E4D, plan scan, whatever the name may be, is what, four, five, six years old in, in a, you know, yeah, it's been out a little bit longer, but as, as a true competitor, as a true product, as a true full service product, it's, you know, four or five years old. Yeah. Uh, so, but that doesn't mean we're seven times better, okay? Uh, we, we, we have an amazing ability to catch up in technology, uh, but the key is, is uh, that the leader continues to innovate and moves forward. I One think of the things I, that we I, kinda... I, you're, you're, it's so funny, you're being so careful and yeah, how you're answering we, these questions is kind of man. cracking me up. We don't. They, we're not trying to bait you into saying like, something no, no, negative. No, I, I know that. No, no I mean, I like, that. we we don't think that that you think that Plan Mech is bad, or whatever. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm interested in your thoughts on this because you've kind of got two types of dentists that I see. Not, I mean, a lot more than two, but two big yeah. camps. You've got people who are looking for an ecosystem, and yeah. then you got sort of what Wes and I sort of sometimes call the tinkerers. You know, they want to have. Yeah this system where they can piece together this and this and this, and they can sort of build it on their own and they can figure it out on their own. And they love yep. that open idea. And it seems they like want to, to save maybe 30 or $40,000. They might, you right. know, to give up the community or the family yeah. as they call it at dent supply, <laughs> right. you know, they'll come on over to another, another dark camp side. and, <laughs> and, and, and I think I worry a little bit about that. You know, John yeah. and I've talked about that, the struggles of implementing this. Yeah. Right. Um, and when you're piecing the, it together, when you're piecing it together, it is a task. And what is that worth in time? I want yeah, you what to do you, speak I want, to that. I want, I'd love to hear you speak to that if you would about, about <laughs> oh people God. who are, are, cause I know that's something that I think we agree a lot on. Yeah. So let, let me go backwards for a second and address, look, I am tiptoeing around certain things because I'm not worried about whether you guys think that you understand me or not because we've been together long enough to know right. that I'm a pretty straight shooter. Uh, yeah. But some of your listeners may not understand, or this is the first time. I'm not going to throw a company under the bus. Okay? No, no. Actually, I, I, let me back up. I will throw a company under the bus if I don't like what they have to do, if I think they're doing bad things for dentistry. Thank you. Okay? Yeah. Okay, that, yeah. That's fair. I have zero issue doing that. Okay, But my friends work over there. My friends are... You know, they're, they're instructors just like I am for Dense Fly Serona. Uh, and they truly make good products. Uh, but I think you hit a great point. There's probably four types of dentists, really, okay? There's the dentist that's looking for an ecosystem. And for that dentist, there's Dense Fly Serona and Plan Mecca and literally nothing else, okay? Mm -hmm. That's their choice, okay? <clears throat> there's the dentist that's looking for a polyvinyl replacement, and we can list off 10 to 15 different choices for them, okay? There's the, there's the dentist that is putting the, putting everything together, okay? And they're literally farming out pieces here and there, and yeah. they're trying to save $10,000, dollars 20000 and they must just have a worthless opinion of their time, okay? Uh, so I, I have zero, <laughs> I have zero, uh, I have zero patience for people like that, to be quite frank with you. We yeah, work we in a too. profession where we can make so much money, okay? And yes. we can do so much good for our patients, and I think what, what people that are doing this putting together stuff nonsense is, is what they're doing is they're devaluing the opportunity they have with their team members. Okay, mm -hmm. it's hard mm. enough for the dentist to figure out how to put that crap together. Okay, and I don't say crap about the product, but the concept of it, okay? But look, I, I will put my team members against an, almost anybody out there and they will run circles around most people's team members in technology. My assistant mm, yep. can scan, design, mill. They can do implant crowns. They can do surgical guides. They can do you know crown uh, implant planning software. My hygienist can take scans. My hygienist can plan implants. You know, it's and, and to me, what is the point of all this technology if you're not going to allow it to delegate to your team members and move your practice and your patients forward? Otherwise. Dude, have a one operatory practice and be happy. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just don't poo-poo those of us that value ourselves and are willing to pay a 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000, whatever premium you want to call it, because we value our time, our expertise, and we value bringing people up around us. Uh, so yeah, I, I just don't have the patience for it. I'm happy to talk well, I think, about it. I think the thing that... that has always been pushed into me. My dad owned his own business as an engineer and he incorporated technology in 1987 in the drafting business and no one else was doing these things. And I remember what he was saying. He said, you know, son, my time is worth more than you can imagine. And he said, 
I will pay a little bit more mm -hmm. for reliability and uptime yeah. in technology so that I can save time. And if I have the support, he's like, I don't care how it works. I remember him saying that when I was trying to tell him how to do something one time. He's like, son, I don't care how it works. I just need it to work today. Yeah. You know, you know. And so, like you said, you know, you won't get into the intricacies of maybe knowing exactly what's going on inside the camera. There's That's people cool like Mike geeky. Scramstead that understand that stuff. Okay, yeah. I do. right, yeah. right. There's people out there that understand that. But what really matters is when you walk in in the morning and the team member picks it up and there's no downtime. And oh. and when you caught when it goes down. That's what I liked about whenever I walked over to Dent Supply and I walked over to Plan Mecca. They're like, you know what? We can log in and we're going to be there for yeah. you. you and know, we we're have not distribution gonna... partners that are in, literally in every city in this country. Exactly. That's right. Service and exactly. That's right. Okay. It was very interesting. It was yeah, very interesting so. to hear you talk a little bit about that. And Yeah, because the first comment we got um, when we put the episode up about some of the scanning was somebody going in there and talking about uh, classic, a company. Classic though, John. Classic that we got that comment. Yeah, the first thing, you know, saying, oh, well, this guy, and I'm not even going to mention the company because mm -hmm. everybody probably knows who it is, but it's a small, it's a, it's a company that's been in the it's lab the scanning smallest, business for smallest. a long time. They make lab scanners and they came out with an intro scanner and it's cheap -er, it's cheaper and it looks pretty good, you know, has no research validation, but it looks pretty good. And, you know, you can, it comes with ExoCAD. So it's designed to work with. So you want to like learn ExoCAD and, and, you know, burn up your mornings and evenings or train your team or hire an IT professional <laughs> or whatever. You know, that's cool. But that's the first thing. And I, I, do you think that it's do you think T-Bone, do you think it's the Internet that's selling that, that the, the Facebook post no, the, no, I, that's, I think that, that's got people think thinking that they should do that? Or do you think it's just a, a desire to save money? I think. <clears throat> look, I think. Here's what I truly believe. I believe all these companies, Dent Supply Throne, the Plan Mecca, all the premium companies out there are messaging this stuff incorrectly. They're mm. not giving us the full story. They're allowing the confusion to be in the market. And when people are confused, they will buy on price. When mm. people understand the product, they'll buy on the merits of the product and what fits best for them. Uh, so I'm gonna put some of the blame on the manufacturers and the distributors. Uh, for allowing this confusion to happen. Uh, but I think innately, uh, it's human nature to look for the cheapest product. So what are the companies doing wrong, you feel like, as far as messaging? What should they be focused on? Well, I think they should be focused on our pain points. You know, too often, the companies are making their product the hero, and the hero isn't the product. The hero is the dentist who purchases the product and the outcome that they get from that. To me, I shouldn't buy PrimeScan because it's a great camera with a heating element built into it that has a X degree inclination, all that stuff. I should buy a product because it makes my life easier, it makes my patients happier, and it makes me have excellent clinical dentistry faster than ever before so I can go home and enjoy time with my family. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, that's what, that's what they should be focused on. But look, I'm not a billion dollar business, not even remotely close, <laughs> and so they're much smarter than I am. Uh, but when you try to sell on features of a camera, any, per any person can find a spin on how to make our camera worth just as much or yeah. just as good or nearly as good. And hey, we're half the price or hey, we're a third the price, whatever it is. So, yeah, I think it's, it's a not great. Apples that's a, and a, it's it's yeah. not apples and apples. It just isn't. OK, yeah, I'll argue that Plan Mecca and, and Sarek aren't apples to apples, but. It's apples to apples at the premium level, you know, from that perspective. Right. Sure. So, so let's talk about uh, if you want, if you're looking at, in, you know, you, you're not in the scanning world at all, mm -hmm. or maybe you are, and you're wanting to get into the Seric world, okay. and we look at the investment that we're going to mm -hmm. make into the milling and scanning world, and it's you know, let's call it's it a 150000 dollars investment. Is it that um, much? Yeah, it is. It's okay. one hundred sixty with the speed fire oven. Okay, so, okay, so all right. If you want to, yeah, if you want to buy the whole shebang, it's 160 grand. Um, so, what do you, you look at that? And I know we've talked to Sam Puri before, and we've kind mm -hmm. of heard his take on this and using it as a tool. And you, you look at that and you talk to somebody who's wanting to get into that, and you, you say 150, 160,000 dollars. 
I know that you know Wes and I are we're not Sarek users, so you're gonna you know we're biased, I guess. But man, that's it's it is a big investment. Obviously, it I is. know that there can be a return on that, but how do you is that is that a pill that you find tough to swallow for for uh, uh, if you're making that initial investment? Or do you or you still feel like man, it's in the end, get into this world, get into this this life, lo- and use this technology, and it's going to make sense for you. Look, l- l- let's address the facts as facts. Outside of your home. Most people will never spend that kind of money on anything else, okay? So frankly, it's probably the second largest purchase anybody will make, okay? Now, I don't like to look at it as it's a $150,000, $60,000 point of entry because I think that's a little bit misleading, okay? You can enter for about a hundred grand, and yes, you get maybe not as capable products, but I think the real entry point is around $100,000, dollars as an entry point. Uh, because, listen, frankly, I don't have a speed fire. Uh, I, don't, I don't personally see a need for zirconia in my practice, so I don't have a need for that. I don't have a well, need it's for 10, wet the, pr- the oven's The oven's 10 grand. Yeah, so. yeah but, and, okay. and, but... And if you're going to just scan and design, it's 70 k The minute yeah, you buy the, M- the MCXL, the... that pushes it to 150 uh, again, so there, there are multiple milling machines. There's the yeah. MCX. There's the MC, MCX, two-motor mill, which is what I have. Okay, and I believe that's in the $40,000 ballpark, okay? Uh, so, so I, look, I don't know the current pricing, okay, on the full system because I haven't bought a full system since 2009, all right? So, but what I want your listeners to understand is the starting point is not $150,000, the starting point is roughly a hundred ten hundred I mean I don't know the exact dollar amounts what rebates they got going on but that's the starting point you can get all the way to 150 160 uh, if you add all the bells and whistles but I'll use me as an example I had until literally three weeks ago I had an omnicam I had a two motor mill which is this the simplest motor milling unit they have and I don't have a speed fire okay so people can get started there, all right? I, so I, I, I want to, you know, apples to apples, you know. Uh, now, in terms of, look, I think the argument of saying, hey, you do X crowns a month and this makes it affordable, listen, that argument's harder to make today. Crowns are $80, $90, $100. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not like when I started in crowns where the, I was paying 175 to 225 for a posterior crown, crown at the time. So it made sense economically. Now, I think the argument should be, and I I, and I encourage every dentist to do this. Okay. The first question is, is not can you afford this? How much is it? The first question is, is do your patients want this? And then you then you build from there. So I encourage every dentist listening to ask your patients if we were able to deliver the same quality well-fitting restoration in a single visit, would you prefer that? And start from there, okay? And if the answer, the vast majority of the time is yes, then you need to seriously look at milling in your office. And then okay. you can work through the economics of it. Well, so everybody, every patient says yes to that, right? So, okay. so that's, no patient says no. So who, so if that's the logic, then who doesn't need a CEREC? Uh Well, in my opinion, no one doesn't need a CEREC. If, okay. if, if you're doing five crowns a month, it probably doesn't make logical sense. Okay. You know, there, there's, there is a point at which it's a feasibility has to be taken into account. But my point in saying that about patients is, it's, it's, it's a bigger picture than that, John. It's, it's about saying, listen, our patients are looking for this. Other dentists and large corporations are marketing this. At what point am I putting myself too far behind that it starts affecting my overall business? Hmm. Okay. So I'm not well, saying go spend $110,000, $50,000 just for that. I'm just saying understand the consequences of not keeping up with what's happening. So the market, the market, you know, right now, <clears throat> as far as proliferation of mm-hmm. scanners, just, just scanning yeah, alone yeah. in the office is about 11%. Okay. So why why would a company, you know, they're continuing to obviously there are many companies continuing to invest in this technology because they believe it's the future to eliminate 
certain things in our office. Why has it kind of been, you know, these the laboratories go to these conferences and they talk about, you know, is this going to happen? Are we seeing more? It just seems to slowly, slowly tick up. And the price kind of gets more and more every year to bring this on, especially, too, if you consider what a, a good... Now, we're talking about your quality, my quality, and John's quality of employee and team member that's crushing this because we're going to retire a girl to do or a guy to do nothing but design because that's the way it works. So when you make this investment, you're just you're not investing in your, your technology. You're investing in your team and taking those people to the next level to get them energized. So if if why is it stuck at 11% if it's so hot? Because if it's so, like you told John two years ago at the first Voices of Dentistry, you mm-hmm. said, John, why are you stuck in the dark ages? You just keep on taking impressions, you know? You just yeah. keep on doing I still that. believe that. You know? I still believe so, that. So why is the market, though, stuck mm-hmm. at this 11%? Well, look, let me give you some political spin. How about that? Okay, okay. give it to me. Let's do it. The market has changed. Okay, we graduate 5,000 dentists a year. North of 60% of them go to work for a DSO. Many of those mm. DSOs are two, three dentists per practice. They have a single unit in their office. Okay, so now that's one unit for three or four dentists in their office versus you know four units for four dentists. So wh- when you say 11%, you know the question is is what is our total buyable population now? You know how many dentists are, is this truly right for? <clears throat> in the overall scheme of things. In other words, if, you know, if I'm a practice of five or six dentists, you know, it's, it's not, it's not the same as having five or six single solo practitioners. So, so the, so the numbers change there and look, it's expensive. I'm not saying that it's not worth it, but it's, it's, it's expensive. And some people can't get over the sticker shock. And when you live in a world where the average practice in this country does anywhere between 600 and 750, it, it's going to be hard for some of those practice to afford the latest and the greatest. But I'm going, go. to, I'm going to keep coming back to this. And you guys are just as guilty of this in this situation. The cost of entry is not $150,000. The cost of entry for premium products can be lower, much lower than that. Okay, so listen, when they come out with the Prime Scan, Omnicam will be packaged... I, and I don't know these things for certain, but at some point they will package the Omnicam and the base milling unit at a lower price so we can yeah. lower the barrier of entry. Okay. So yeah. some, you, look, if you're a single tooth dentist, you don't necessarily need the prime scan. Agreed. So, I, so I, yeah, I'm it's a great point. You, it's a great, it's a great point. Ent- it's a great point. Cost of yeah. entry is going to be in the $80,000 ballpark before we know it. So let me ask yeah, you okay. one other thing on that, just while before we'll get off this this cost no, question. But why do you I think like DSO? It. Why do you think DSOs aren't milling in the office if it is huh. a good business decision? Okay, so let, let me answer that in a couple of ways. Uh, my first rebuttal to that is uh, the second largest DSO in the country has made it standard of care for their DSO uh, to have milling in every office, and that's Pacific Dental Services. Okay, uh, hmm. so I would argue that. Uh, uh, that that speaks volumes. Uh, number two, uh, and I don't know how to say this. I have to be tiptoeing around this because they have lots of money, okay, and lots of lawyers. Uh, DSOs are, to a certain degree, uh, build on the lowest common denominator, okay? I would argue that, you know, by and large, as a broad generalization, 80% of DSO dentists are three years or less out of school, okay? Mm. So... At the end of the day, three most dentists coming out of school can hardly prep a crown. <laughs> they can hardly do some of those things. You know that that's not their focus, and they're looking for a scalability and buildability. Uh, and I think some DSOs aren't necessarily run that well from a training perspective and all of that. Okay, so I think it's harder for for dis, slightly disorganized DSOs uh, to implement this type of technology. I get what you're saying. Yeah, you have to have a stable situation in the office, don't you? Yeah, and, and, and or you have to have an absolutely committed leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Steve Thorne at Pacific Dental is a committed leader. Uh, and they have, they have the, the, the protocol and training systems in place. 
uh, that makes it a standard of care for their practices. And, and they see the economic benefit. And the economic benefit is not just economic benefit. The economic benefit is understanding that patients want this, and this is a differentiator to drive people to your practice. Through so word you think of mouth, that that's through, mark, through marketability you, and all of those things. So you think that because of companies like that, that some of that's going to start to trickle down and affect us the and you, um, the smaller practice, let's say, that's not the solo group. practice. Yep. Yeah, solo practice, and and therefore people looking, they're going to say, well, they offer same day crowns. Why aren't you offering them West Mullins and you know John Rogers and and well, you guys aren't up to date anymore. You need to get up to date. Is that is that what you think is going to push the market to g- go up above this eleven percent? I don't know if that's going to push the market. It pushes me. Okay, it pushes people like me who care about sustainability for their practice. Let let me ask you guys a couple of questions here, okay? Do you guys Mm -hmm. go to Starbucks to drink your coffee? Sure, yeah, sometimes, Starbucks is a DSO. Why do you go to Starbucks? They're open convenient hours. They provide the latest ways of making coffee for you. They provide it at a quote-unquote reasonable cost, and you get consistent service there. We can argue whether it's good, bad, whatever it is. Do you guys shop at Target or Walmart? Yes, sure. Target and Walmart are DSOs. They provide a large selection. They're open better hours than your traditional mom and pop shop. They make it very easy to buy things. You don't even need a human being to check you out anymore. You can buy things on your app and they'll be there for you when you get there. And and see, to me, there's a parallel in that experience. And yes, we can say they're commodity items and all these different arguments. Okay, I can have those all day long. But what it is, is you got to understand that this is what our consumers, the patients, Mm -hmm. to a certain degree are looking for. And I'm not saying that we have to become DSOs or become corporate-like. I'm just saying we have to keep up. Yeah, well, here's where I would say, and John, we had this conversation on the plane because both of us kind of have this type of practice and you do too, where you, you cater to quality, you cater to mm. the, the, the experience, you cater to the comfort. And, you know, let me just say that most of the people that I know that are women in my practice, they're going to pay, like John and I were talking about it, a hairstylist to, to cut and trim their hair for 150 bucks, and they're going to do it every two to three months. And, and so dentistry, as much as we want to try to say that it's a commodity, and we might get into the high weeds here a little bit, and we mm-hmm. better be careful, is as much as we say that it is trying to be, it's trying to be a commodity, I just don't know if even the average consumer, from what I, what I see in my patients in a mid-sized town, um, really, really value. I think they value because dentistry is an upfront, in-your-face personal thing it's different than a heart doctor it's different than traditional medicine and i believe it's different than a starbucks it's it's different it's experiential right you know it's not commodity based it and for your patients that may be true but i would tell you that for 50 percent of the patients it's not true 50 percent. so you think Uh, i would argue that it's more than 50 percent personally i and by the way by the way I don't, I haven't built a practice on experience. I take people's insurance. I built myself on on providing quality. I built myself on providing quality. I don't believe that one bit. I don't believe it one bit. Because when you walk in your office. I take take eight different plans. I mean, I I I take every insurance. I don't care what plans you take because when you walk in your waiting room, it speaks quality. It speaks quality. I've seen the pictures. I, I think. Look, look, I think you can walk into most Pacific dental practices and their their Uh, lobby speaks quality too. Not like you, man. Not like yeah. you. Sure. I disagree. Please. You're you're about the experience and you know it. You want people to choose quality. I, I, I don't I want people to choose that we take care of you, we provide uh, unbelievable uh, technology, and we provide a good experience. So service and price is what's your magnet uh, is what's your big is what your mantra is? I think is? it's. I think you're saying customer service and quality are your two out of the three, and price is no, not the, num- the the not the top I, two. I will say our our USP, our unique selling proposition in our practice is we provide a wide range of services and we take your insurance. Okay. 
Well, you know, I think John? we have to learn. Your point is well taken that we have to learn from DSOs. I think that's there's no question there that we certainly have to look at what they're doing. And we have to look at how they're making decisions on demographics and business. That's why I brought up the fact that, uh, and I didn't know about uh, one of the companies that's now committed to milling. Not uh, now. It's uh, five, for five, for five years they've been that way. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it is no, interesting. That's, so, so, there's, so there's one DSO company that's doing that, and you said they're the second largest? Uh, yeah, Pacific Dental. I, don't quote me on this. I believe they're around 700 offices at this point. Uh, and and I, I don't want to say there's one DSO committed. They're the only DSO that I know of, large DSO that I know of, yeah. that has made it standard of care. In other words, every office will have it. Yeah, Every but I get what you're saying that you can't one. just you can't just easily bring that into some places that that you know like you say you have to have dedicated leadership you have to have great training and you have to have consistency those are all I think and that, and that's maybe you know to answer the question of who doesn't need a CEREC besides just the doctor that's doing five crowns a month it's it's the doc that doesn't have those things you know you have to have consistency with your team you have to have training you have to have leadership I mean don't you think those are the those are really more of the keys to this than how much money it costs. Absolutely. And there are doctors that don't value that. And that's okay with me. I'm totally okay with that. I'm okay with people not valuing it as well. And, and, and that's fine with me. Uh, and yes, it has to make economic sense. Okay. Sure. It has to. But my argument to people is we can't be black and white about the economic sense. So, uh, the econ so, let's, so let's talk about how to make economic sense. I want to totally change the subject. Sure, Does it make absolutely. economic sense to buy an iTero? I like being just argumentative to do though. Yeah, well, that's where I'm going. Got, so so to say speaking, that again, speaking of economic sense, does it make economic <laughs> sense to buy an iTero just to do Invisalign? It does. I did that. I know <laughs> you did that. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It made sense. Why? Why? Because we scan every patient uh, in hygiene, and we have seen a 10x increase in the number of aligned cases that we've done. A 10x? Uh, 10x. 10X. Right, well, maybe not. Maybe it's 7x or 8x. I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's 4.2x. You don't know. But we, we, we oh, know. When you say 10x, now it's down to four. Right. Okay, look, I'll give That's you real numbers, okay? So in 2017, <laughs> we did uh, 14, invisible, uh, 14 aligner cases, okay? In 2018, we did 48 aligner cases, and we're on track at this point to do about 80 aligner cases, 80 but is to that 85 aligner cases. And you think that's the scanner? Come on, man. That's not the Altero, dude. That's um, you. No, I, I, I don't even do the cases. My associate does them. I know, but it's you think the scanner is what has increased your... But I mean, I'm not saying no, it does not, nothing. Not in, of you itself, think it's, not in of itself, but it's the only thing that's changed. It's the same team members, the same patient base. There's no different marketing or any marketing for it. It's, I'm, I'm just telling you, it plays a role. What, because look, let, let's think about this logically, Okay. No, if you present more things to patients, more patients are going to say yes. Absolutely. Okay. I agree. Okay. Yeah. If you if you provide pay, a team members a technology, it increases their awareness and focus on a specific service. So that in of itself is going to increase it. So can we? Could I achieve those results without the iTero? Sure, but it would have been an uphill battle. Okay. And for me to pay twenty five grand to have that type of increase in case acceptance, that type of buy-in from my team members, and these types of results, I don't see any reason why not to do it. I, I just mm. don't buy the argument that it doesn't work. And I, I bought that machine literally to only do that. I don't do crown and bridge with it. We don't do anything else with it other than take impressions to show people simulations and to show people uh, and to take impressions for Invisalign. That's all we do with it. We don't even use it as a digital impression machine for, for restorative dentistry. So what's your protocol then? You're talking about, so patients in the hygiene chair mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're, your hygienist is talking about clear aligner therapy. And at what point does a scanner come into that conversation where, where that actually- Before all of that, we, we take the scan. We take, scan, scan is now part like x-rays for us. Okay. The iTero is the scanner you're using when the patient comes in the hygiene chair? At this current moment, we will be switching to the prime scan uh, in the very near future for that. So well, every waste. patient in the hygiene chair is getting an Invisalign scan? Every new patient is getting it. And then we have a plan to have scanned all of our existing patients over the next two years on recalls. So, so you feel like we, that versus... We're going to alternate with x-rays. So if they're yeah. due for x-rays, we're not going to take the digital impression. When they're not due for x-rays, we'll take the digital impression. 
Because I look at what Invisalign's done with, say, Invisalign Go, right? You're, mm -hmm. I'm sure, familiar with the, you yeah, know, the that's, app. That's and, the 80% of what we're doing. Right. So what? So I look at what we're doing, for instance, is we're just using Invisalign Go. We're taking photos of many patients in the same way and uploading them to Invisalign Go app, which immediately gives them a yes or no whether they're, of course, <laughs> of course it's funny because everyone's a candidate magically. Yeah, of course. But yeah. they'll say, Just like SmileDirect. What's that? Just like Smile Direct. Right, exactly. Look, everyone can get it. Yeah. yeah. But but that that just that in and of itself, I mean, do do I need a scanner if I'm if I'm doing that? Do you need one? No. Do you but you but in your opinion that would that would make a difference. Look. I'll make a broad generalization. 70 to 80% of dentists who implement a scanner will see significantly improved results in whatever they're trying to do with it, okay? There are pay, there are pay cases, uh, smart people like yourself, who have very engaged patients uh, that can get those results without it. But in I'm your just view, you that's from personal that's, experience. That's, I, yeah. I like to think of myself as a smart person, uh, very technologically oriented, very engaged with my patients, very good team members that have, at this point, the majority of them have been there a while, uh, and, and we struggled for it. We struggled for a time and. And to me, it's it, it's made a big difference. Hmm. Hmm. I know people so, will argue with me, and, and I'm ready and willing to have that argument. But but I can only speak to my results, and maybe my results are different from others. Uh, but but it works, and it's made uh, it's made a tremendous difference for us. So when you look at what's going on in clear liner therapy mm -hmm. through Dent Supply, right? Because there, mm -hmm. it sounds like because sure, there's not a what's up. They they have a product called Sure Smile, right? And when you look at the fact that right now, of course, there's a bunch of disagreements going on with these companies about who accepts whose scan. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have, have you have you used that product much? What do you think about it? If you have, uh, I just met with their team on Sure Smile. Uh, we will look at uh, uh, implementing it into our practice. It has to make uh, it has to make uh, clinical sense first. In other words, it has to have a unique selling proposition that I can see. Uh, it'll be helpful if it makes a financial bonus as well, a financial sell sense. Uh, and look, I think this whole nonsense of who takes what scans is all politics and posturing. Mm. I think mm -hmm. the loser in that is the patient and the dentist. I wish these companies would get their beat together and just figure this out. Okay. Yep. Uh, so stupid. So it's so stupid. It is stupid. Okay. It's yeah. absolutely stupid. Uh, but I think Sure Smile is a good product. And uh, we'll be trying it in the near future. What I did like about it is uh, uh, they have the ability to integrate CBCT data so they can take root configuration and root data into consideration. Uh, they also do a facially generated treatment planning where they'll merge the cast or the mo 3D model onto the patient's face and, uh, and remove cants and uh, level out arches. Uh, so some of those things uh, sound, sound fantastic. That's now, pretty cool. How yeah, yeah, so so it has some unique propositions there. Uh, it happens to cost a little bit less. Uh, it depends how you define a little, about five hundred bucks less uh, than a full Invisalign case. Uh, so so there 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 are, there are positives there. So we're looking at that uh, as a, as an option, and uh, I can talk to you about it in maybe uh, uh, nine to twelve months after we have some results on our first few cases. Yeah, I think that's the thing that's interesting about this kind of clear liner therapy is people are drawing lines in the sand, especially Invisalign, and saying we're not taking scans from anybody else anymore. And, you know, they're still accepting Omnicam. They're still accepting TrueDef scans. But they're, we asked the dent supply rep, and they're like, well, we don't – it's supposed to be validated for Invisalign, but uh, that's <clears throat> yet to be seen yet for Prime Scan. So, therefore, you've got – you know, a couple of scanners in your office, including Itero and your old Omnicam that still allow you to scan for Invisalign. But I want to go back to that workflow just a minute because it's interesting. You'll, you'll bring that patient in the operatory, you scan them, which we see a lot of people doing that now to track gingiva and all those type of things. Mm -hmm. It's cool for the patient to see. What actually happens after that? Do you actually get back from Invisalign anything different than Invisalign Go? Uh we get a, an immediate simulation in about two minutes that is, a, I call it a cartoon. I call it to my patients a cartoon. I get a cartoon in two to three minutes that shows our patient what their teeth would look like straight. Now, 
That doesn't mean that it's possible, okay? That's the right. clinician to decide. And it does give me the ability to three-dimensionally move and adjust and do all of those things. It's, right, look, so it's, basically it's, it's like an initial wax-up per se. We don't know yeah, how we're going to get there, but well, it's the wax-up, which right. is like the wow factor, right? It's how we all sold dentistry back yeah. in the 90s and early 2000s it's, is have a white wax-up done. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sizzle. Um, yeah, it's it's no different than digital imaging, cosmetic simulation. Uh, doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it's actually possible. I can right. I can slap some teeth on you, but uh, here's here's what I would say: the results are pretty pretty accurate. Okay, and it doesn't tell you how many trays it'll take or which product it qualifies for at this point in time, uh, but you know it, it works. And so what's I, the I date? Have, I ahead. have under good authority uh, that uh, Densply Serona will have a, a similar type of product in the coming uh, couple of quarters. So what's a level one, level two, and level three practice? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, so a level one, okay, that's okay. Any other I had to go back I to it. I couldn't, I yeah, couldn't resist. I know. Any other questions? I, because I, I saw Wes, you, you turned red when I said it makes sense to buy Artero just to do, in, just to do more in aligner therapy. I just told, I totally disagree with that. Yeah, that's I disagree okay. too. So you yeah. wouldn't, let me ask you this. Do you, do you guys spend money marketing? Yeah. Not a lot, but not some. A, not, but, a, not a ton, no. Do you spend uh, the equivalent of, uh, let's see, how long do you think my ter how long do you think a digital scanner is good for? Three years, four years, five years? Yeah, probably four or five years. All right, so let's call it four years. So let's call it 30 grand even, okay? I'm going to amortize my 30 grand over four years. That works out to be about seven seventy five hundred dollars a year. Okay, divide that by twelve dollars, twelve months. So I'm going to spend seven eight hundred dollars a month in marketing to my existing patient base. Okay, and it produces a result. Okay, that that's how I look at it. It's a marketing tool for me in my, inside my practice, which I think is always more effective than any marketing you do externally, because these patients love you and trust you and, and already know you, and uh, you know it goes from there. Now I, I do want to I want to come back to the aligner thing. Um, uh, because there's some more magic to that to increase case acceptance. Uh, number one, uh, we're now making more patients aware, so we're having more conversations with people. Uh, number two, uh, where we are giving every patient a treatment, we're giving most patients a treatment plan, a generic treatment plan that shows them how they could afford it. And what we've done to increase our case acceptance is we've actually raised our fee and increased our case acceptance. And we went from calling Invisalign, we used to charge $4,000 for it, which is, in my opinion, too cheap, okay? Uh, and now we've gone to where our price is 40, our, our fee is $4,800, but we present it as, as $200 per month with nothing down for 24 months without interest. And these are, you know, look, a scanner alone does not increase case acceptance. You gotta have the people to do it, you got to have conversation with people. You got to have ways to make it affordable for patients. Okay. It's a multi level thing. So my argument is, is we had the people. Okay. We had the communication skills and we had the affordability in place already. What's changed is the awareness within our team and our ability to use technology to bring that to patients. So, so th what you're all. saying is spend the 30,000. Mm -hmm. Go out and learn how to talk to people, take your team or find mm -hmm. people, invest in some type mm -hmm. of, you know, management leadership thing mm -hmm. and go out and learn how to communicate because you keep coming back to this through the entire thing. Yeah. The Serona thing, the Seric thing, all this stuff surrounds around because you're a good communicator, you're a good trainer. And you have team members that are amazing. You've said that multiple times. Yeah. And you have doctors now that, that you've bad? been able to... I mean, they might hmm? listen to this. <laughs> right. What's they're that? horrible, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I can't, well, say, I can't say they're bad. They might listen to this. But right. though you Good do, point. you've always yeah. been around that. You're like, invest in your people, invest yeah. in your people, learn yeah. how to communicate. Uh, uh, but it's you could always technology. say, instead of spending $30,000, I could would spend... argue, by the way, I, I'm sorry, I, let me... Wes, I, I would never say spend the 30 grand and then go do those things. I would always say, go do those things first. And yeah, then the, you can the, this is not going to make you 30. You set it on the floor. You still have to learn how to communicate, right? The hardest thing is to get the people in place. Well, I just feel like you could spend $300 on an, on an iPod. 30,000. 
Oh yeah. And uh, just take photos of every patient and talk about yeah. Invisalign and it takes you one minute and you don't have to wheel a scanner into the room and you don't have to share a scanner between four hygienists and you don't have to have a, you know, wait for the stupid uh, simulation to come up and you don't have to, you know, now deal with sharing this. And you just learn how to communicate and you take six pictures with an iPod and you say, oh, look, you're a candidate for Invisalign. And if you communicate well and you track it, I have a feeling that there's a little bit more to that. I mean, I, you're going to tell me that you didn't spend like, did you not have like a big meeting and go, okay, guys, here's our goal. Our goal for this next year is we want to do 100, 100 clear liner cases. Here's how we're going to accomplish that. And it's majority of that conversation was on communication or was the majority of the conversation on how to use a scanner? The only thing that changed on Invisalign was two things. We took digital impressions, showed them a simulation, and we made it more affordable by offering 24 month same as cash financing. Okay. The, mm. And you found an associate to, to take it to the next no, level. No, no. I found and an associate that, that, that yeah. is executing the cases for me. My hygienist. That's right. My hygienist. Somebody can actually do it. Well, I would argue that I could do it too, but uh, my hygienists are the ones. No, you could do patients. it too, right? My hygienists are the ones enrolling the patients. Okay. Uh, but let's move on. Let's go back to the level one, two, three, four. Uh, because, right. because well, look, my argument back to you guys is, is that you didn't, that you had questions about sleep and all of these things. And I turned out to be right on all of those things. I'll be right on this too. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, wow. I love okay. it. I'll I love be right it. on this too. Oh, man. Uh, so okay. let's talk about level one, two, three, four practices. Uh, in my definition, mm -hmm. there's no book on this. Okay. Uh, I consider level one practice a practice that it's in startup phase or a uh, dead phase. Uh, you know, when they're declining. And by definition, I like to define them as revenue from zero to $500,000, okay? A okay. level two practice, in a level one practice, their main goal is survivability. You know, they, they take on any case they can get. Oftentimes, they say no sometimes too. Uh, they don't really have a bit, what I call a business model in terms of what type of dentistry they're going to do, what they're going to be known for. They're just trying to figure out, hey, am I going to be around a few years from now? Okay. Uh, a level two practice is a practice that's doing from 500 to a million, maybe a million two, somewhere in that ballpark. That practice has gone from single tooth dentistry to, to getting more acceptance in quadrant dentistry. Uh, that practice has gone uh, from doing just a traditional general dentistry to maybe dabbling in some more advanced procedures uh, to help increase uh, case, to increase revenue. Uh, and, and they've engaged in training their staff, and I don't believe in staff, but at that point they've engaged into training the staff. And then a level three practice is the stage that I'm in, and that's when you go from, you know, that 1 million, 1.2 million, uh, up to two and a half, two and 2.6 million, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, and that's where you go from having a staff to having a team, uh, people that work together that, uh, are on the same page, that have an owner mentality. Typically, you've gone from a single doctor practice to a two doctor practice. You're starting to offer a wide range of services within your practice. Uh, you started to have, uh, expanded hours, whether that's a few nights a week or a few mornings a week, but you're starting to dive into the realm of going from being a solo practice to being a dental business, uh, and you're providing most services within the practice. Uh, and then a level four, uh, a level four practice, which is where I'm on the cusp of and where we want to get to, and that's a practice that's going to be in the two and a half to five million dollar ballpark, and they start bringing in specialists. So they never refer patients out. They provide technology. They have expanded hours. They go from having a staff at a level two practice, level one, level two practice, to a team at a level three practice. And they start having an organization in the level four practice where people are running, to, you know, really working together to problem solve. And the dentist is probably the least important person in the room. And the dentist is not focused on day to day operations, but more focused on a visionary leadership uh, type of thing. And the, quite frankly, the owner dentist probably doesn't necessarily practice full time at that point. Yeah. So yeah. that's how I kind of define level yeah, like one, that. two, three, and four practices. I love it. Yeah, that's a great way of uh, categorizing. I think that makes a lot of sense. And mm -hmm. the, where do you think that most 
dentists can can go. Oh. You know, I mean, because there's a lot of factors in there that that come into play. You know, there's a lot of factors, including geographic factors, demographic factors, leadership factors. I mean, do you think a lot of people can get to the level three, level four area? Uh, my argument would be uh, that if you want to create sustainability and be around 15 to 20 years from now, your mindset is going to have to be level three. Okay. Uh, because, look, look, let's just be frank. Okay. We li we're, we're practicing the greatest time in dentistry, in my opinion. Okay. But we're also practicing in one of the scariest times in dentistry. Uh, I believe in, in my world uh, that I don't say standard of care, but the expected level of care is CAD CAM, CBCT, technology. You're, you're at a quarter million dollars before you, before you sneeze and just technology in a practice, okay? Not including yeah. chairs, not including, in my situation, treatment centers. I'm going through a half million dollar renovation in my practice right now. You know, not <clears throat> including all of those things. So the truth is, is technology is pushing us more and more towards multi-doctor practices. Because each of you have technology that if you were in the same building or the same office, you would just have the same, same technology, you would share the cost between two, maybe three people even. Uh, so, so uh, you know, look, in technology, as you guys said earlier, it's not necessarily getting cheaper. Uh, there'll be something greater and better in the future. Uh, and today's technology will get less expensive, so the point of entry will always be at a lower level than we believe it to be. Uh, so, you know, I, I would argue that we have to. Most dentists have to get to the level two, by my definition. A level one is not sustainable in today's world. Uh, you know, it's sustainable for a short period of time to get to a level two, uh, but it's not sustainable. But level two is where people are at. You'll make a pretty darn good living at a level two practice. You'll have a pretty darn good lifestyle at a level two practice. Uh, but you won't, in my opinion, uh, the vast majority won't have the ability to pick and choose the type of dentistry they do. And by moving to a level three practice, I've given myself the ability to pick and choose the type of dentistry I do. And that to me is critically important uh, to have that ability. So we've talked about this before a little bit too, is what it really takes in education. Mm -hmm. And John and I believe, non -stop education. I think what you believe. Non-stop education. That's what it takes. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, Non-stop education. And you said recently, I heard you say, and I can't remember where it was at on the socials, but you said something to the effect of there is no replacement for actually going to an educational yep. event. The camaraderie and the conversation, not necessarily, it's more about what happens after the mm -hmm. lecture and around a dinner table or something where you're actually collaborating because we all practice with one or two people and so we never have that opportunity so for to go from level one as you're yeah. coming out of dental school you're a level one practitioner as you would say to a level two it's going to take some effort and you're going to have to go someplace speak yeah, to that you know uh you know I, I look just to be argumentative I'll, I'll say that level one to level two <laughs> will happen with time because otherwise you'll just you, you just won't survive okay so i right, i think right. it's relatively yeah. i think it's relatively easy to get to a, a early level two practice, but then that's when the hard stuff, that's yeah. when the hard stuff happens, okay? Uh, look, mm -hmm. and yeah. when I say nonstop education, okay, that doesn't always mean going to a CE event every weekend or every month. Nonstop education means right. reading. Look, I still have the same two books in my bathroom that I've had in there for 12 years now, and I read them over and over again. I have the two books I have. Let's hear I it. have Carl Misch's implant book, and I have Paul Homley's case Man. acceptance book in my bathroom. And uh, dude, that, those are, those are, that's dude, awesome. That's, I spend 30 yes. to 40 minutes a day in the bathroom. In the, in the if toilet. you're listening to this right now, write that yeah. down so, right there. You know, those, yeah. those, those are the two are, books I have. I read them over and over and again. Every time I finish it, I start back over again. And it's nonstop for me. Nonstop education is also selectively choosing where you participate on social media and what you listen to. Nonstop education is, you know, having a few colleague friends that don't even have to be in your town anymore uh, that you can run ideas by. But I, I think, look, yep. as, as educator myself and as you guys are, I think it's it's hard for me to say the real learning happens after the class, okay? Uh, but I think what really happens is 
you motivate yourself. You put yourself around people and you say, if that joker can do it, why can't I do it too? And you yep. put yourself around yeah. like-minded individuals and you get yeah. motivated. Maybe it's not even great conversation. Yeah. Maybe you don't speak a word, but you just hear what the hell is going on and you're like, yep. you're come I up want to their something level. like that yep. for my life, you know? And, and you know, for me, right. we see it all the time. I bring, when we do classes, I bring everybody over to my house. We hang out here. I say, listen, you can stay as long. The bus leaves at 7.30. You can stay as long as you want. My wife sets a curfew at 11.30. By 11.30, everybody needs to be gone. <laughs> and, you know, we hang out in the man cave and we just, we talk shop. And and Well, and I think there's something to uh, being around people who you want to be more like. Yeah. And I think that that's really what happens when you're in these environments where people have, you know, paid money and or traveled mm -hmm. to this location and they are the type of people that all feel the same way. They don't always have a great drive. They may just be this is their first time there, but the majority of them have drive and they know where they want to go and they know where where they know that this is the kind of place that's going to drive them to be better. And I think we all need to be surrounded by people that are smarter than we are that are doing better than we are, that are at the next level up from where we are, if you don't ever see that, if you don't ever see that next level, you really don't even know where to go. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, I bought a lot of online training. I spent a lot of money on online training. They've always been ineffective for me. And it's the same content hmm. that I get oftentimes when I go to the actual class. And to me, maybe and it's just my lifestyle and my personality, when I leave my domain, when I leave my office, when I leave my house, when I lock myself up into a hotel, I get focused. I get focused mm. on the task at hand. And, and, and look, truthfully, when we educate, it's not, there's hardly anything that we can't educate online that we educate on site. But people come in focused. And, and look, I noticed this from the people, you know, 95% 90, of our customers are out of town people. And I notice that the out of town people are more engaged than the in town people. The in town people are like, well, I gotta go do this at three, I'm gonna leave a little early. Hey, I'm not gonna come to dinner, I got this going on at home. And, and, and they miss out, they're just not as engaged. And yeah. uh, so, you know, I think there's an unbelievable value uh, in, in live CE uh, where you go and participate. And I would encourage people uh, to finance it if you have to. Uh, smartly, smartly, mm -hmm. okay? I, mean, mm -hmm. I don't encourage people to finance mm -hmm. things non-smartly. But uh, you're missing the boat if you're not taking education. A absolutely. And, and I think it's a great, I think it's a great. And I think it's okay to take bad education sometimes. It's okay to have, yeah. to, to go to an educational event and have it be a dud <clears throat> because you can't be right 100% of the time. And we, and this goes back to team management, you, we have to learn to make it safe to fail for our team members and for ourselves. It's, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail sometimes. It's okay to spend a couple of thousand dollars in the CE, CE class be not worth it. I went to a CE class on full mouth rehabs and TMG, TMD, TMJ stuff. And it was the best money I ever spent because I knew I never wanted to do that stuff. So it, so it made it crystal clear for me that I never wanted any more of that. And uh, so, so uh, that, mm -hmm. that was important to me. I think it's a great segue into kind of how we're going to close okay. the show tonight because you are offering quite a yep. bit of CE right now. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing, where yeah. people can find you, and um, and then we'll close sure. it from Thank there. you for the opportunity. Uh, and, and you guys are offering CE events too, so I think you guys should uh, also make, make – I hope you make mention of that on your on your podcast. We always do. Good. <laughs> good. All right. Um, look, uh, I started a company called 3D Dentists. Uh, our – while while eighty percent of what we do is dig, is digital technology based, not everything that we do is digital technology based. But here's what we have in common: uh, I believe that to survive and thrive, and to be professionally satisfied, uh, today's dentist is going to have to go beyond general dentistry. They're going to have to be go beyond traditional dentistry, and we provide education that helps dentists implement new procedures that have massive impact in their practice, much of which is technology-based. Things like sleep apnea, things like implant dentistry, things like medical billing, things like oral sedation, 
uh, thing, things like, you know, all, all of that, things like practical business stuff, some of the things I'm talking about. And, and th that's what we do. We make it fun. We make it enjoyable. Uh, if you like people, if you, if you want to sit in a room and not have anybody make you a little bit uncomfortable, probably don't show up. Uh, because I, I've absolutely invested in everyone that comes because I know they spent a decent amount of money. And more importantly, they've taken time away from their lives to be there. And I believe it's my job to make them uh, get something out of it. So I'll make people a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, I love it. That's what that's one of the things that uh, you've always been uh, really good at is is having, you know, making us think. Uh, and, and, and we know that uh, from all the feedback we've always heard from people that have attended courses with you, uh, that it's been uh, sometimes a real game changer because because it's not just a it's not just a course, but you're actually asking questions that are kind of the harder questions about what does this really mean in your practice. And, you know, I think that you're, you're categorizing these, these levels of practices and it seems like this is the way maybe to be able to take, you know, your practice to that yeah, next absolutely. level, if that's what yep. you want, if that's what you want, you know, and my, again, my argument is going to be that, that, <laughs> uh, look, North Carolina is, is, is in a precarious position. Okay. Uh, our state has kept corporate dentistry, DSOs, out of our state until this year, okay? And so they're mm. coming. Some people will put their heads in the sand and say, it's not going to matter. My patients love me, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to tell you that most patients are pretty fickle. They'll change over insurance. They'll change over hours. They'll change over convenience. They'll change over any number of things. Uh, now more than ever, it is our job as independent dentists as quote unquote private practice dentists uh, to up our game. And that doesn't mean that you have to buy everything under the sun. That doesn't mean you have to build a Taj Mahal. It just means that you have to implement common sense, logical business principles in your practice and you will do just fine. There is more than enough to go around. And what we really as a profession need to understand is that our real growth is in capturing the 50% of the population that never sees a dentist. And imagine if we were to capture 10 or 15% of that, what would happen to all of our businesses? And, um, you know, we mm. just got to understand, we got to stop fighting with each other. And another thing that, I, 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 another thing that drives me nuts right now is how 150,000 general dentists have allowed 10,000 specialists to control what we do, how we think, and where we get our education. It drives me absolutely bonkers mm. uh, because at, That'd be a great show, at the end of the at the yeah. end of the day, if if I if we cut them off, their practices would die, and and for them to sit down yeah. and say I can't do implants or I can't do ortho or all of this stuff is absolute garbage in my opinion. And I say that as a as a person who has a brother who's an oral surgeon and who has a best friend who's an oral surgeon both of which have been in instrumental in my placing implants and continuing to expand what I do. And I surround myself with, with, with specialists who support me, who don't say, just send me everything. My endodontist supports me, my orthodontist supports me, my periodontist supports me, and I refuse to do business with people who don't support their general dentist. I, I just don't understand our profession. Well, in the future, you, you, well, you talk about the future and putting your head in the sand. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a, a, an approach of... Uh, putting your head yeah. in the sand as a specialist, if you if yeah. you're going to isolate yourself, insulate yourself, to think that somehow uh, things are like they used to be. You know, there's too well, much good education out there for general dentists yeah. to uh, to not expect that they're going to rise to a higher level. Maybe not to do everything that the specialist does, but that's not the point. The point is we should be uh -huh. working together to further the profession, which means ensuring that the quality that the general dentist is providing is is good. And I think specialists could play a huge role in that if they choose to. And by the way, you know what's driven all this for general dentists? Technology is the great democracy for dentistry. Technology mm -hmm. makes things that were once impossible possible for dumb people like myself. I passed out watching a tooth mm -hmm. being taken out in dental school. I'm doing full arch surgeries now uh, and and all of that I, I, is, is due to technology making me more confident and less afraid and partnering with the right specialists. And, and look, as much as I talk about CAD CAM, I still have a massive lab bill every month 
uh, because we do we do we partner with wonderful laboratories who make my life easier and who make me look good and who who understand that hey the onesie twosies threesies I'm going to do in the office but the more complex cases I'm going to certainly uh, work with my laboratory to do. Yeah, and that's and that's what uh, you know it comes back to kind of full circle here, mm-hmm. the value of time, yep. uh, and and the time value that's of money. Kind of, and I think that if we go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, if we understand those two things, really, that's where technology makes a lot of sense. You, you know so. where I don't think technology is right? Printing aligners. A, it, a, it's a, it, a, it's a lie. You don't print aligners. You print models <laughs> to make suck downs. Okay? And right. then you, you, you believe that your assistant is only capable of making suck downs, and you hold them back from their true potential, which is uh, selling 80 Invisalign cases, which you don't believe uh, is, is happening in my practice. So... <laughs> well, on that note, well, yeah, I just I will never forget the video you put up of oh, Sully so good. in your kitchen, where you just arguing. You, you just took it, took him down, yeah. man. You're like, so let's just talk about the value of this, and it was like, <laughs> ah, because we, you know, oh, we're we, we're very much like minded there. You know, we we pay a very good, hefty lab bill every month so that yeah. I can go home at five thirty or six o'clock and. You know, so that I can have cases that are going to go in every single time, and 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 so I mean, yeah, you're preaching to the choir, man. I mean, this is yeah, this is totally where you, you, the cost side of things you, just you know crazy. you know logical business, by the way, logical business is almost every business that starts out outsources before they insource. So you outsource mm-hmm. until you reach critical mass. I have zero issue with mm. offices making their own aligners when they reach critical mass and it makes logical sense to literally bring your own tech into the office or whatever it may be. But, but, but right. logical businesses, you outsource, outsource, outsource until you hit critical mass and then you insource. And, and so to this whole concept of I'm going to insource until I reach critical mass and then I'm going to outsource is flawed thinking. Yeah. Well, John, <laughs> It's, this has it's, been another one, man. This has such, been another such one. a great you know, conversation. I think that may, uh, when, when you when you listen to this type of uh, episode, uh, it, it's going to make you think. It's going to make you think about uh, digital scanning. It's going to make you think if you're a Seric user, what you should be looking for and making decisions about Prime Scan. It's going to make you think about kind of the state of the art now, as far as what we're thinking about in the scanning and milling world. And, the and if ecosystem. you haven't listened to the one before this, mm-hmm. you know, you need to go back and look at just the buyer's guide or assessment right. of the scanning market right now. That's the previous episode to this. So check that out. That'll kind of shed some light on to why we're having this conversation. Right, right. That. This kind of naturally flows from that. And, right. and then, you know, talking about clear liner therapy, I mean, this really kind of brings it all home about just how how important is technology in your practice? We know that we're big believers in that, and, and uh, we really appreciate you being on with us, uh, T-Bone. It's been a great conversation. My pleasure. Anytime. I like, I like having discussion and, and causing trouble. Yeah, thank you, T-Bone. <laughs> we want you guys to connect with us on social media. If, uh, if you're not already following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the good stuff, uh, join us there and continue this discussion. And also remember to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcast, which really helps us to get our message out there. And remember to spread the word, tell your friends. It's been another great show. For Wes, for T-Bone, I'm John, and we are The Dental Guys.